Hello and welcome to another section of this complete Angular course. In this section, we will try to understand what is an observable and where and when do we use it. And let's start this section by understanding what is an observable and what do we use it for. In a very simple term, we can say that we use observables to handle asynchronous data. Now, we can also use promises to handle asynchronous data. Promise is a built-in feature of JavaScript which we can use to handle asynchronous data. So, we can handle asynchronous data in Angular either by using an observable or a promise. So, before we proceed further, let's quickly try to understand what is an asynchronous operation and asynchronous data. We already know that JavaScript is a single threaded programming language. That simply means that in JavaScript, the code is executed line by line in the order in which they are defined. And once the execution of one code is complete, then only the next line of code in the program will be executed. So, if a code or task takes long time in its execution, then the next line of code will have to wait for its execution. It will be executed only after the previous code execution is complete. For example, let's say we are making an HTTP request to the server to get some data. Now, the data will come as a response from the server. This HTTP request and response cycle, it might take some time to complete. So, if we are making an HTTP request by writing some synchronous code, the next line of code after HTTP request will be executed only after we have received the response from the server. So we can say that synchronous code is blocking in nature. And this is where asynchronous programming comes into picture. As we learned, JavaScript is a single threaded programming language. And an asynchronous code does not get executed in the single thread. The synchronous code will be executed in the single thread which JavaScript provides. But asynchronous code, it will not get executed in that single thread. Instead, it gets executed in the background. And that's why when we run an asynchronous code, it does not block the main thread. So an asynchronous code is non-blocking. That means when we make an HTTP request asynchronously, it will run in the background. And the next code after HTTP request will be executed immediately in the main thread. And in this way, the HTTP request will not block the execution of next line of code. So, using asynchronous programming, we can perform time-consuming network requests without blocking the main thread. Now, an asynchronous code will return us some data after some time. So, we need to wait for that data and once the data is available, we can utilize it in our code. And to handle that asynchronous data, we use either a promise or an observable. So, let's now understand the difference between a promise and an observable. And to understand the difference, we first need to understand what is streaming of data. So here, let's say we are creating an Angular application. And from that Angular application, we want to make an HTTP request to the server. Now this server, it will get some data either from the database or from the web API. And this data, which we are requesting from the server, it might be a huge data. And we want to send this data back to the client through HTTP response. Now, this data can be sent by the server to the client in two ways. The first way is we get all the data from the database or web API and send all the data at once. Or what we can also do is we can divide this data into small chunks and we can send each chunk at a time to the client. For example, let's say we are creating a video streaming app like Netflix or YouTube. Now, when the user makes a request from our app to the server requesting a video file, so let's say from here, from our client, we have made a request to the server requesting a video file. And from the server, we want to send that video file to the client. Now here, let's say the video file size is of 1 GB. Now 1 GB data is very huge and it might take some time to send all the data at once to the client. So in this case, we are sending 1 GB of file to the client and this file is very huge. So here, the user will have to wait for the complete file to get downloaded. And once the file is completely downloaded, then only the user can start watching the video. So in this scenario, we are sending all the data at once. We are sending one big file at once to the client. But instead of sending the complete data at once, the server can send the data in small packets. So here, 1 GB data, it can be divided into small packets and can be sent to the client one after the other. 
In this way, the user does not have to wait for the complete file to be downloaded. Instead, he can start watching the video as soon as the first packet arrives. So here, we are streaming the data. In this approach, the data is sent to the client in small chunks instead of sending the data all at once in a big chunk. And this is called as streaming of data. Here, we are streaming a huge file, a big file into small chunks to the client. Now that we know what streaming of data is, let's try to understand the difference between a promise and an observable. A promise promises us some data over a period of time. The data which promise returns us, it can be an actual data or it can also be an error. So let's say we have made an HTTP request to the server. Now a promise will return us the response data if everything was okay or it will return us an error object if something went wrong. For example, if there was some network issue, then the promise will return us an error object. But if there was no error and we have received the response data successfully, in that case, the promise will return us that response data. Now, the main difference between a promise and an observable is that a promise cannot handle stream of data. If we use a promise for handling stream of data, then the promise will resolve as soon as the first chunk of data arrives. After that, when the next chunk of data arrives, it will not handle that data. So a promise returns us a single value or a single piece of data. But with observables, we can handle stream of data very easily. And we will understand it with an example in the next lecture. So an observable can return us multiple values. It can return us multiple data. Another difference is that a promise will certainly return some data even if there is no code using that data. So for example, let's say we have made an HTTP request to the server to request some data. Now we are going to receive that data, but we are not going to use that data anywhere in our code. So promise will return us that data even if there is no one to use that data. But in case of an observable, the observable will only provide the data if there is someone to use that data. If there is no code using that data, in that case, the observable will not send that data. This is another very important point to remember about observables. And we will learn about it practically in our coming lectures. Finally, a promise is native to JavaScript. It is provided by JavaScript language. But observable, it is not native feature of Angular or JavaScript. It is provided by another JavaScript library called as RxJS. So we can say that an observable is a function that converts the ordinary data stream into an observable one. And you can think of an observable as a wrapper around the ordinary data stream. Now, this observable, it is provided by RxJS library. And RxJS library uses observer pattern. So, let's also quickly understand what is an observer pattern. In an observer pattern, first we have an event emitter. We can also call it as observable. This observable, it is going to emit some event. And then we also have an observer. And this observer, it is going to listen for that event. So whenever an observable emits an event, the observer will wait for that event to happen. And once that event happens, the observer can handle that event using event handlers. So in an observer pattern, we have an observable. You can also call it as event emitter, which is going to emit some event. Then we have an observer. You can also call it as event listener or subscriber, which is going to listen for those events. And whenever that event happens, the observer can handle that event. It can execute some logic with the help of event handler. Now in RxJS, an observable emits these following events. So it can emit a next event, an error event, or a completion event. And there will be an observer which will subscribe to these events. It will subscribe to an observable. And whenever that observable emits the next event or error event or completion event, the subscriber is going to listen for that event. And whenever that event happens, if the subscriber wants, it can handle that event by executing some code. And it can handle that event by passing this next function, error function, or completion function as a callback function to the subscribe method. Now, if this does not make any sense right now, don't worry, we are going to understand it practically in our next lecture. But keep in mind that when we use an observable, it is basically going to use the observer pattern where an observable will emit an event whenever something happens.
and the observer or we can also call it a subscriber it will listen for that event and when that event happens the subscriber can handle that event by executing some functions now as i mentioned earlier observable is not native to javascript or angular it is provided by another javascript library called as rxjs so the rxjs which stands for reactive extension library for javascript it is a javascript library that allows us to work with asynchronous data streams the rxjs library it provides us with a lot of methods which we can use to work with observables and manipulate the data which the observable is going to emit and we are going to talk about some of these methods of rxjs library in our coming lectures so this is all from this lecture in the next lecture let's learn how we can create an observable using rxjs library and how we can work with an observable in our angular application